Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 8. So this time we're going to look at a trigger to carry on our sequence of events of what we're doing. So after we get past the door we'll have a trigger to say there's something on the table. Uh, we'll bring in a table and we'll also look at creating a marker icon as well. So first things first, what we do need to do to sort out our uh, storyline of sorts is we can use the same sort of system that we've previously used in our opening script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend out here and I'm going to use this light right here and what we'll do first is let's create a prefab of this torch as it is and what we can do is if we go to our torch folder just here now we already have torch one as a prefab but this second prefab we're going to drag into here will contain the light and animations as well so we can just drag and drop that into there so now whenever we drop this into our scene it isn't going to be the original torch we've used it's going to be the proper prefab one so we could go over here into this section and drag and drop our torch onto the wall there and just rotate it so it actually aligns with the wall itself so i think if we just put this back to 180 i think or is that the wrong way? Okay, so zero should do it. Perfect. So now we have light in this section as well. Let's move it to about there. There we go. And I tell you what, let's have one the other side as well. So I'm going to uh, drag and drop onto the wall here. Okay. So now let's quickly extend this little area here. So I'm going to hold control and press D on this floor. Pull it out to about there. And in fact, what I think I'll do, instead of having that torch there, I'm going to put it round here. So we've got a bit of light round this side as well. So let's bring it out this way. Bring it this way. And let's rotate um, 180. And just bring it against the wall. I think that's it's not quite right, is it? It's the wrong way around. There we go. So 90 degrees should bring it flush with the wall when we bring it this way. Okay, perfect. So let's do a quick bit of modeling. And at this point, we are only doing simple kind of things with our area because we'll get onto more complicated things as we get further into uh, development. We are struggling to kind of see a little bit here. So let's take our light source and let's quickly change it to directional so we can see. Must remember to turn that back to spot. Uh, okay, so we just bring in this inwards to about there so I should do and I'm going to hold control press D again to duplicate drag over here and drag along here should we rotate that a bit does it make much of a difference okay so we can see the lighting has an effect on this wall here so we'll have to deal with that uh, lighting is something which is obviously quite vital within a game but there's always different ways and means that you can change lighting, but it's something we'll delve into later on in development. Okay, so as I say, what we're going to do is deal with the story, and we're going to say that there's something on a table. So we're going to need a table. Let's go to our objects folder, and let's bring in this wooden table. As always, you can get these on the website. Head over there and download an asset. Let's go to the Survival Horror Series, and it'll be right there. So in the wooden table, let's drag and drop this into our game. If you don't want to use this table, it's perfectly fine. You can use any table at all, really. So I'm just going to change the scale. Let's have it as 3 by 3 by 3. Still too small. Let's have 7 by 7 by 7. Bigger table. Now let's bring it out the ground. There we go. That looks all right there. So next thing we're going to want to do is I did say we're going to have a kind of a marker going on. So this marker is going to kind of point to where we need to go. So... I think I'll actually bring that in now. So let's go to our textures folder and I'm going to bring in just a simple arrow. It's a PNG file and you can pretty much use any sort of arrow. If you want this one, it'll be on the website, but feel free to use any kind of texture for this. And I'm going to do this using a plane. So game object, 3D object and go down to plane. Now a plane is just basically a 2D image of something technically, but it still classes a 3D object because we're in a 3D environment. Now to do this, I'm just going to drag and drop this yellow arrow onto the plane itself. And then down here we have shader, click on standard, click on particles, and then let's try, I think it's alpha blended. 
So it kind of gets rid of all the black around it. And you can see that it looks a bit more like an arrow. We need to rotate it on the X by 90 degrees. Uh, minus 90, that should be. So it kind of points downward. And let's shrink the arrow because it's far too big as it is. Let's have it as 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Might be still a little bit too big. Let's try 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Okay, that'll do. So what I want the arrow to do is be hovering over here and kind of point down to say this is where you need to go. So I'm going to bring it just above the table and we're going to use some animation. So let's go to our animations folder. Uh, let's right click actually and rename. And let's call this um, guide arrow zero one. And let's create an animation for it. So add component. In fact, we'll create the animation first instead of adding it. So let's create the animation and then add the animation to it. So animation, create, guide, arrow, anim. And then we need to click the record button. And we're at frame zero. We're doing 60 frames a second as we've done before. And we'll just start it at the position on the um, Y, I think. So we'll start it here and set a keyframe. So it'll do, um, oops, sorry, not rotation. We don't want rotation, do we? Uh, let's right click, delete key. And we want a position. So we'll start at three. And let's say by the first second, we want it to kind of come down just a little to about there. That's fine. And then by the second, two seconds time, let's have it as above about there. So then at three seconds, uh, so it'll be 180, we want it back to three. Now obviously you can play around with this animation as much as you need to. There's no specifics about it. I'm just showing you what you could do for your game. So I'm gonna press the record button there. And do you know what? I think we'll actually leave the animator on. So if we, in fact, no, do you know what? I'm, I'm not comfortable with using animator most of the time because I feel it's a little bit uneasy to work with. So I am going to actually remove it and we will work with animation. I feel like animation is better because we can control it more. Uh, so what we need to do is need to drag and drop our guide arrow animation. Play automatically is fine. Size one and we drag and drop guide arrow onto element zero. Let's change it like we usually do to legacy and we'll have it rep mode set as um, loop because we want it to continually go up and down. So let's just quickly check our guide arrow is working just fine. Let's head over here. Okay, perfect. So it's as good as it can be. Obviously, you play around with your animations, but you need to. So now let's set up that trigger, that all important trigger to say there's something on the table. Now we can do that by going game object, 3D object and cube. And this cube can serve as the actual trigger for as soon as we step through this little bit here. So we just need to adjust the size of the cube to fit this corridor area. We can do that by stretching on the X. It doesn't matter if it intersects the walls. It's not too important because the player will be able to collide with it anyway. And make sure we tick is trigger and untick mesh renderer because we don't want to see a big cube in the way. So let's go to our scripts folder, sequences, and create a new C sharp script. And let's call it B first trigger. So you can see the reason I'm using A for opening, B for first trigger, it's kind of following sequence of a b c d e f g because this first area i don't think we're going to have more than 26 sequences but you can have different types of sequences as you go along it's just a way of being able to quickly find a script at this point in time so we're going to use pretty much the same sort of script what we did for our opening so if we open up our first trigger in mono develop or visual studio it's entirely up to you and Let's see. So if we go to our opening, we can copy uh, the two statements up here. In fact, no, we'll, we'll just use, um, should we pause the player or should we keep him going? I think we'll pause. We'll, we'll do the same. So we'll copy these up here. 
if you want to stop your player moving, I'll tell you what bits of code you can keep in. And if you want to keep the player going, you know, I'll tell you which bits of code you can remove. So underneath the Unity engine there, let's paste them in. Let's get rid of void start and void update for now. Uh, we're going to use uh, this one. So we can copy public game object the player into there. And we can also copy the text box one. So we can copy straight into our first trigger. Now we're not going to be using void start. We're going to use void on trigger enter. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And what we'll do as soon as we enter, we will freeze the player in position. So the player dot get component spiky brackets first person controller open close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and we need to start our coroutine because again we use a coroutine because we're going to be waiting for a couple of seconds so start coroutine and let's call it uh, scene player open close bracket close bracket semicolon and then close curly bracket to close that on trigger enter function Next, what we need to do is the I enumerator. I enumerator. And we called it scene player. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. Let's go down a few lines and close curly bracket. And we should see scene player up here turn to black if you're using mono develop at least. So once we start this scene player, we're going to turn on our text box. I, I don't think, do we turn it off at any point? Um, I don't think we do. I think we do keep it on, so we don't need to turn it on right now, but it may be something we can play with later on. So text box dot get component spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text equals and let's have our player say looks like a weapon on that table. Looks like a weapon on that table. Semicolon. And then we'll wait for, let's say, two and a half seconds. So yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And we'll have 2.5F, close bracket, semicolon. And after that 2.5 seconds, we can copy this line of code, paste it beneath, and just remove the text out of there. So it makes the text box look like it's disappearing, even though it's still on screen, it's just got no text to actually display. And then after that uh, disappears, what we can do is copy that line of code, place it here, and change that to true. So while we're at it, at this point, we've got that little marker arrow, haven't we? So we can add in a couple of lines here to activate that marker. So public game object, the marker semicolon and after we've enabled our character we'll just do the marker dot set active true semicolon and save so all we need to do is add our trigger script to the cube so drag and drop let's right click rename cube and let's have it oops uh, rename first trigger and let's press play and now hopefully oh I've just realized we did not set our variables did we so we just need to go on there and drag and drop the player drag and drop our text box which is in our canvas right there text box and the marker itself so guide arrow and while we're at it we'll also turn the guide arrow off up here so it doesn't appear until we actually trigger that script so now let's give this a go looks like a weapon on that table there we go so you can see the sequence of events what we're doing here is working as intended. So next episode, what we're going to look at 
is we'll look at picking up the weapon, animating it. Uh, we'll add in some effects maybe for the when arrow pops up. So because we're going to start looking at enemies. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.